Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about a guide for a new energy weapon in Apex Legends called the Volt. This is a fan favorite among many because it melts people. And it's upsetting a ton of people because how fast so many people get knocked out by it. So that's what we're here to discuss it. Try to maximize and how to avoid this gun. Um, whichever way of the fence you land on. So let's begin with the basics. We're obviously, the outline for today is talking about the basics of the gun, such as the mag size, its damage output, various recoil pattern changes with different barrels, recoil control, and of course, baked in between, we're going to put practice routines before getting out there. So let us start by covering the basics of the Volt. As a reminder, as we learn recoil later, that field of view does not impact recoil. It impacts visual recoil only, and as you change scopes, your sensitivity changes. So then, of course, that one, it gives you the feeling that the recoil is changing. But the overall pattern and what you're seeing is always the same. For the most part, you're going to get a little spread in there. I will put a link in the description so you can remember the basics of field of view. I think this is an important fundamental. But if you know the channel, well, you should be all set. Real quick, this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. It is a market-leading virtual private network service rated number one by Tech Radar. I have personally used ExpressVPN as my go-to when protecting my information online. This is also very gamer friendly as you have the flexibility to create shorter connection routes between you and gaming services, reducing ping and lag. But this also reduces barriers that block you from utilizing certain applications, such as a situation occurring with TikTok. This is a simple to use and affordable VPN. Grab it today by using the link in the description and pin comment and find out how you can get three free months. Now let us get right back into the guide. Now onto the basics. Some quick things, obviously the Volt is an energy weapon version of the R99 in my opinion. So this is obviously going to be a very, very powerful weapon and use every second that somebody gets it. So you're going to get fried by this a lot. It does 16 to the body, 13 to the legs, and 24 to the head. Real quick, let's just talk about the damage output. So obviously 19 without the mag is 304 damage. 21 tier 1 is 336 damage, 23 tier 2 is 368 damage, and 26 tier 3 is 416 damage. With the new armor adjustments, I mean, people will get fried even without a mag. This gun is crazy. This weapon feels more powerful than the R99 at times, but that is because of the new Time to Kill, or TTK, that was somewhat introduced with the health pull changes to the armor. We look at the R99 out of the supply crate, and it should be noted just how much faster it melts compared to the Volt. I do find the Volt, though, much easier to control recoil-wise, and I consider it the little brother or sister of the R99. It's just easier to control, and that's really just a fact. I have a guide on the R99, and the faster rate of fire, while better on the R99, is, in my opinion, a lot more difficult to control. Still easy, but more difficult to control than the Volt. Currently in the crate, the R99 is fully modded, so something to note compared to an unmodded R99 in prior seasons. Now, another thing to note, as distance occurs, obviously there will be a damage drop-off. What I found interesting is that the damage drop-off removed the headshot multiplier, probably a means to balance it because of the new TTK. And as you can see, there is no headshot multiplier once you get further away from your target. So just to take note of the distance, you see. I feel lots may not take this into consideration. This could also be because the Volt is easier to single tap fire. It's really easy to single out in just one shot to get a headshot. So that could be another way of balancing. I mean, this could be a bug. So if you're watching this guide and for some reason they patched this and realized that was not their intention to remove the headshot multiplier, then obviously this is no longer a point. But nonetheless, important to note currently, let's talk mag size. It's 19 without a mag, 21 tier one mag, 23 tier 2 mag and 26 tier 3 so this is one bullet across the board less compared to the r99 the way it was before obviously in the crate now it holds 32 bullets the base irons really aren't that bad but you do get this ring around your crosshairs without an attachment so some may find that annoying if you change to various colorblind settings the color changes you can attach the hcog the bruiser the hollow the hollow one by two and the digi threat of course you can't attach a 3x or anything else further beyond that now let's talk about fov aim sensitivities and impact on your aim and recoil note that when you ads your sensitivity does change and you can change your sensitivity based on the site in this menu ads sensitivity 
you can have it faster than your hip fire or slower than your hip fire aim. This is just my personal preference, but I prefer to match my hip fire aim to my 1 and 2x. But of course, because everyone watching this guide is using different sensitivities on PC and controller, use what will help you personally to control the recoil. If you're on controller, having around 3-3 settings on your sensitivity is going to help you laser people. Of course, if you have too high of a sensitivity, you're going to struggle a lot more on controller. I've seen people do it, people fry and people melt, but it's just something to note as it can be a little more difficult. The downside though to this is that you lose that turning speed. Again, always my quick advice when you're looking for sensitivity as we're about to delve into the recoil patterns and showcase all of them, find comfort, maintain speed within long gaming sessions without sacrificing your movement. Adjust sights depending on your intended goal and stick with the sensitivity. You know, don't change it. You will, as you get better, change your sensitivities and that's okay. Change your sensitivity and adjust it of what feels comfortable for you. Now remember again, as I reiterated at the start of the video, FOV only impacts recoil visually, but a quick summary within one or two sentences, higher FOV will make the pattern look smaller, fish eye lens. Lower FOV will make this pattern look larger because you're more zoomed in. The space it occupies though does not change. Think of it like a camera. The person is not changing size, the image is. Let's get into the recoil pattern. We will now use a 2x hollow to be more zoomed in. This may take more time to cover as we're literally looking at each pattern from various barrels and I'm going to start at the same spot for each of these to create as much consistency as possible. Let's talk about the overall pattern. We'll start with no barrel and look how the recoil changes with various barrel mods. Let us start with no barrel mod. So obviously we can see the recoil kicks immediately up vertically and just kicks to the right. And when it kicks to the right, you need to pull left to counter. There are some occasional sways to the left in the pattern, but overall will continue to pull to the right. Just be ready for those minor pulls to the left in the recoil. And this matters more when you're shooting at a distance. Matters less when you're shooting close range. Now at the end of the recoil pattern, towards the end of the overall mag, the gun stops kicking as much vertically and it becomes pretty much all horizontal. The issue here, as you can see from the recoil, is that it starts swaying randomly back and forth. There is some consistency, but you just have to be ready for the pull left and right, knowing this is mostly horizontal control from here. Kind of reminds me of the AK-47 in CSGO, which is in my opinion way more difficult to control than the Volt, but at this point though, your target should be dead. If they're not, well, you should probably be practicing more on the initial recoil and tracking and not focusing on the recoil pattern here at the end. Now, in this next section, as we add barrel mods, there's going to be less talking. But our goal, I want to showcase all the recoil patterns for you just so you can see the pattern shrinking and the difference between each of the barrel mods. So let us begin with level one barrel mod. All right, perfect. Now let us go into the level two barrel mod. Up next is the level three barrel mod. And finally, the level four barrel mod. Ooh, baby, it's gold. All right, so what you're gonna find interesting is that the recoil pattern at the end is just really a juggled mess. And it becomes a bit more clear and center focus as you can see at the end of the pattern as the barrel mod gets better. It's gonna pull hard left, which means obviously you have to pull slightly to the right to counter this. Interesting though, as that doesn't really happen with a whole lot of other guns that that juggled mess starts to clear up. Interesting but also obvious that the verticality of the recoil climbs less and the horizontal pushes that you saw before start to diminish and becomes more of a straight line. They're not fully gone, but they're less pronounced. Just something to note that you don't accidentally overshoot when you have a gold barrel mod. So something to note going from a no barrel mod to a gold instantly, you have to be ready for that so you don't miss your shots, especially when you're at a distance. As you practice, you wanna have the bots move, which I do in the background probably during the course of this video. The other ways to control this is to utilize your movement to control the pattern. Side swaying left and right is a quick and easy way to counter recoil. So just some thoughts on how to practice. Number one, practice the recoil standing still. 
That's obvious. Number two, practice a recoil on a target standing still, but you're going to still sway left and right and get into the groove of the overall recoil. Number three, practice on the moving bot standing still to shoot them. Obviously they're going to kill you because they're shooting at you, but the goal is to get the feel of the recoil while somebody else is moving. Number four, practice on the moving bots while doing the side strafing and avoiding gunfire. Remember, no matter the sensitivity, as you're further away, the movement required to control the sensitivity is going to be less than you think. Just because a gun looks like it kicks a ton, it means that it doesn't require insane movement to adjust that recoil. Remember to keep your hand fluid and relaxed when controlling recoil. Reason? Number one, tension causes fatigue and is bad for you. And two, the movement produced by the gun is fluid, so you really have to match it. So it may seem counterintuitive to say, but tension really creates speed and momentum. So find that balance where you have tension, but not enough. I know that sounds hypocritical, but you have to find that sweet spot because you do need speed and you do need momentum. The goal is to not death grip your controller. Don't death grip the mouse because obviously then you're going to have just a jerky motion. One of the most important exercises when practicing recoil, increase the distance. A lot of encounters, especially in a battle royale like Apex, is that ideally you would love to be up close and personal. It makes your aim look fantastic, obviously when you're lasering people down. The reality is, sometimes you just have to hold the spot and you're going to be shooting people from long range. So practice at various distances, especially with the Volt, the R99, or anything that is difficult recoil-wise. Because up close, obviously you're going to nail your shots and that recoil is going to matter less, but at a distance, even the smallest jump is going to make the biggest difference between you landing your shot and not landing your shot. Practice, 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 practice. Once you feel comfortable, get out there. You actually have to play the game because this currently is a no stress environment. So it's easy to think clearly. Under pressure, you're gonna become clouded. You're gonna completely have everything fly out the window and all that practice feels like it was for nothing. But the solution is practice until you build confidence and you feel it in game. Obviously more games actually playing builds up confidence, right? So again, that practice is to help reassure you that you can do this, that you know what you're doing. And over time, it's gonna give you that confidence to succeed in game. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Hope you found this video tutorial helpful on the Volt. Look forward to seeing you guys fry others. Probably gonna fry me. This gun is extremely frustrating to face off against, especially if you're using a flat line versus this gun. It's crazy, it's absolutely insane. But nonetheless, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.